How to avoid probate on a house? It's a common question we get a lot. We're gonna get into it right now. All right, I'm Brendan Moore. I'm a probate real estate agent here in California, and I'm here with Bill Heyman, who's also a probate real estate agent, but also has been working in the probate field for over 30 years with various licenses that allow him to do so. So we're going to discuss how to avoid probate on a house. So, uh, Bill, um, let's get right into it. Sure. Uh, how how can you avoid probate on a house? Well, there's a number of different ways that you can avoid probate. There's three primary ways. The first method is what they call joint tenancy, and probably a lot of people are familiar with that. I know you are too. Mm. That's where two people or more uh, take title to a house as joint tenants. And by doing that, when one of the joint tenants passes away by what they call operation of law, the other surviving tenants receive ownership of the deceased joint tenants owner, and there's no need for probate. Um, but there are some drawbacks to joint tenancy that people don't often think about. Um, one of the drawbacks is if you put someone on title with you as a joint tenant, mm. other than your spouse, and let's say you put your son or daughter's name on there, and let's say through some unforeseen circumstance, that son or daughter is involved in a lawsuit or um, they're involved in a major accident. And let's say that some entity or person legally goes after them to collect some money. Well, because their name is on your house as a joint tenant, your house is subject to that whole issue and potentially is in jeopardy. So right. joint tenancy, like I said, it's not the greatest way to do it uh, unless it's your spouse. You, they say that putting your spouse on as a joint tenant is okay. But that's one of the ways. Got that's it. one of the ways. Yeah. Um, and, and that seems to be one of the most common ways that I see Very people were to, to avoid it. Very common. Uh, what's another uh, common way? Well, another way that is, is getting more common, and it's actually a good way to do it, is I'm sure you've all heard of it, is a living trust. A living trust is one of the best ways to avoid probate, and it does a lot of other good things for you. <clears throat> there is there is some front end cost to doing a trust. Obviously, you got to pay somebody to put it together, unless you're savvy enough to do it yourself. So you're going to run into a little cost there, but in the end, it's worth it. I mean, a living trust will definitely avoid probate. That's the second way. Who can someone go through to uh, have a living trust made? Well, again, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Um, you can go to a, a trust attorney. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you'll probably pay the most to do that. And depending on where you go, you, you're probably going to pay $1,500 to $5,000, just, again, depending on the attorney and depending on the level of uh, service and documentation you want. Another way you can do it is you can go through uh, a non-attorney service, uh, someone like myself, who is a registered and bonded legal document assistant, there's a lot of them that will do living trusts, and they will do them definitely for a lot less than what attorneys charge. And that's fine as long as you don't have a complicated situation and need legal advice. Uh, of course, if you do have a complicated situation and you need legal advice, you should always go to an attorney to have your trust done. And then the third way that you can do it is, again, if you're savvy enough, you can do it yourself, yeah. uh, but again, if you're not experienced at it or savvy in that world, uh, you can usually do more harm than good, but that's the living trust. I, I've seen a few uh, times that somebody has done something like that, and it wasn't maybe written how um, maybe uh, someone in the legal world would interpret things. Um, ended up being a bit of a problem for them. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it can create more of a problem than it solves sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I got it. You know, uh, Bill, one thing that a lot of people have said to me is, uh, well, we don't need to go through probate because uh, the uh, my loved one who passed away uh, had a will. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily uh, correct. They, they will often still need to go through probate if those other three um, options uh, are, are not... Yeah, 
That, that's place. very true. Um, I, I talk, I've talked to a lot of people over the last 30 years who, when we're first talking, they'll say, well, I, I have a will, so I'm okay. Not really. <laughs> A will actually guarantees probate. A will does not avoid probate. So, you know, if all you have is a will and you've got a house that's just titled in your name, if you pass away, you're going to go through probate regardless of whether you have that will or not. So, Mm. you know, a will is not, it's not going to help you out of probate. It's just not. So, um, And oh, you know, Brendan, there is one other method that we should probably mention here um, that that we haven't yet. Uh, Years ago, not that many, California put into place this new, uh, I guess I'll say law, where there's a special type of deed that you can do up called a transfer on death deed, where you set it up through your deed that when you pass away, the home goes to a certain person that's named in, in the deed. Um, I, I don't get involved with those much because there actually have been a lot of problems with that, uh, unforeseen problems. So if you, if you're thinking of doing a transfer on death deed, I really urge you to talk to an attorney about that first, because there are some, like I said, there's some potential problems that can crop up with that. So, uh, but that is a, a third way that's available in California. Uh, there's, I think there's a few other states that have it, but but not every state has that in place. Mm. Yeah. But those are the three big ways to avoid your house going through probate. All right. Uh, and, and of course, if you do need any help with the probate process and you're in California or Nevada, please reach out to us. So that's some great information there. And you likely came across this video because you may be about to go through the probate process and we're hoping on avoiding it. And you found out that you probably can't avoid it. Probate being an expensive task and a daunting task, um, that was likely your hope. But it doesn't have to be a daunting task and it doesn't have to be expensive. And a way to avoid that is by using a service like ours. We're in California and Nevada and uh, we essentially do a service where you it's a dramatic savings for the probate. In fact, if there's real estate involved, uh, the probate really won't cost you anything um, when we're selling the real estate. So please reach out to us. Uh, our contact information is on this page. It's below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and see if we can help you out. Now, that's for a probate that is non-contested. So it's a non-attorney uh, probate administration service. So that's important. Um, Anything you'd like to add to that, Bill? I think you really kind of covered it, Brendan. I'll just reemphasize that, as Brendan said, if you've got an uncontested probate matter that you have to go through, uh, please give us a call or contact us because we can save you a tremendous amount of money all the way around and usually a good amount of time as well. Well, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Send us your questions. Please give us a call, email, text. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.